and welcome to the Art of Surgery Surgical Tips. Today we're going to talk about blocking the common perineal nerve. Now the common perineal nerve block is one of the easiest blocks that we do. And one of the nice things about our specialty, podiatric surgery, is that we could block the whole leg, the foot, and it is so easy for us to do it. And I'll tell you a little story. My son, Dr. Ken Mercado, a few a while back, went on a medical mission with the Westlake uh, Medical Group and they went to Haiti right after the earthquake. When they got there, they were transported to a small town in Haiti and he said that there was just a very small medical facility. But when they got there, there were hundreds of people waiting for the American doctors and they were shearing and all that. And uh, so he went in and the anesthesia group that was supposed to come with them was delayed by one day. But Kent was able to start working right away because he could do blocks. And one of his very first patients was a young man, a young nine-year-old boy, who had had a, a splinter of wood that transversed the gastric nemus from one side to the other. And he had been walking around with that piece of wood sticking out of both sides of his legs for over 10 days. Well, it wasn't that much of a big deal for Ken to anesthetize it and remove it. And 10 days later, the young man came in to see Kent, and this is uh, 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 towards the end of his mission, and he came in wearing an American flag, very proud of his American doctor. And I am very proud of this picture that I'm showing you now, not only as a father, but because as an American, uh, uh, we do so much for other people. And the greatness of our country, the greatness of America are its people. Now let's go in and show you how to do this block. Let's review some anatomy. And to do that, let's use one of our skeletons. I always tell our patients that this is a patient who didn't pay the bills. It works, by the way. So that we have the fibula, and the fibula is the long bone that is non-weight bearing. It has, has the lateral malleolus and the head of the fibula. And it's nothing more than a triangular bone that has been twisted, and it is mostly for the origin of different lateral muscles. Now, in most people, you'll be able to find the tuberosity or the head of the, of, the, of the fibula and when we have a patient like Lily here who is a young beautiful young lady and has beautiful structures it's so easy for us to pop it here and get where the fibula is at and it's easy for us to find the lateral malleolus. We did some time back a little tape on the, on the anatomical landmark of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the lateral collateral ligament or the anterior telofibular ligament excuse me so sometimes, and as is the case, most of our patients are fatter, older, and if you have a hard time finding the head of the, of the fibula, all you have to do is look for the tuberosity of the tibia, and then you could go across, and that's where you find it. Let me show you my skeleton. So here's the tuberosity of the tibia, and you could always find that, and if you go across, you'll find the head of the fibula. Now remember that that nerve comes around around the neck of the fibula. It starts in the be behind the fibula and behind the, the tibia in the, in the popliteal fossa and you have the sciatic nerve that will come down and divide into a tibial nerve that goes medially and a common perineal nerve that will come around the neck right in this area. So what we do to find it, and this is so easy, it is so easy, what we, so easy. What we do is that we mark our area, we look for anatomical landmarks and here is Lily's tuberosity, or the head of the talus, and I make a tiny little mark like that, and that's all I need. Next, I take my thumb's bread and make another little mark, a little line, and that's what I'm going to inject. The materials are very, very simple, and we utilize a 3cc syringe with a, 20, uh, a 30 gauge, 1 inch needle. I'm not going to inject Lily because I like her too much. But, and Lily, by the way, is one of our uh, podiatric assistants, and she is also uh, the assistant to our, to our uh, administrator, Susie, uh, Susie Castro. And she's, she's wonderful. I'll show you a picture. She's actually a very pretty girl. So what you do, once you have the mark, is that you raise the wheel. Remember, you, you could spray something called raise the wheel, and then you penetrate all the way down till you hit bone. On Lily, that will be maybe about this much before you hit bone. Then you aspirate and inject one to two cc's of a local anesthetic. Now the local anesthetic that we use is 1% lidocaine 
and sometimes we mix it with 50% of our long-acting marcaine. And you can use either one cc or you can put two cc's in the area. Sometimes if the patient has a, a, a lot of fat, you might not be able to hit the bone, so you have to try, and if you don't hit it, then just inject two, two and a half cc of a local anesthetic, and that's all you have. And this will give you anesthesia all down the lateral aspect of the leg. It's exceptionally uh, good when you're doing any work here. And by the way, the way that we have our patient position is the way that we do surgery. Now, I've trained, in my, in my experience, I have trained hundreds of residents, and we've had some very tall residents. The tallest one was six, seven, and the shortest one was under five feet. And whether they're tall or short, whoever is doing the surgery should get that table so it will be comfortable to the level where they could see everything they're doing. And by putting the patient in this position, you could reach all of the lateral aspect, you could do a calcification of a, of a tendon Achilles, and that's gonna be one of our, uh, one of our uh, little surgical tips because we have beautiful procedures for that. But once you block that, the anesthesia, you got it just like a good one, you have to let it sit. One of the things that we found out when we do surgery on the local is that we get such good blocks. And the reason for this is that we don't have IV sedation. When you have IV sedation, you cannot get uh, the, the, the paresthesia that you get when you do a tibial block. And I remember I have one cute patient that came in and uh, she's the kind of patient that everybody has that asks a hundred questions. She comes in with a notebook and she asks you all kinds of questions. And uh, uh, after I answered all the questions, when she went home, we did the surgery on a Saturday right here in this room. And at 7.30 in the morning, I get a call from my service and it was our patient, her name was Pat. And I said, I said, well, put me through. And I said, Pat, what's going on? And she said, uh, well, I, I have a problem. I said, well, what's the problem? I said, I have no pain. This is the next day. And I had to laugh. I said, you know, Pat, in over 50 years of, of doing surgery, you're the first patient who ever called me who had no pain. But the nice thing about blocks is that if you do them right, they will last a long, long time. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation of doing the common perineal nerve block. I hope you have a chance to use it, particularly if you're a student, if you're a resident, or, or even a practitioner. One more thing that I want to talk to you about is our latest book, which is called The Podiatric Surgeon's Field Guide, Notes on Anatomy and Surgery. I love this book because it is so practical, and there are hundreds of original uh, medical illustrations, and there are hundreds of, of surgical pictures, and uh, video clips. We, actually, we have actual video clips of surgery. To order the book, you could visit our website, artofsurgery.org, and you could order it from there. For the Art of Surgery, I am Oi Mercado DPM. Thanks for watching.